What's behind the surge in HMRC inquiries? Well, simply put, the adoption of both schemes has skyrocketed, and that means they're now a much larger line item in the Treasury's budget. Naturally, that's attracted additional scrutiny from parliamentarians and coverage in the press. It's also been exacerbated by some actors in the advisory market and the wider campaign against perceived waste in government spending. What triggers an inquiry? To discourage abuse, HMRC target a certain percentage of inquiries for further investigation. So often a claim has been flagged and the caseworker has perfectly innocent questions to make sure that the claim does qualify. The trick is to be prepared for that eventuality and to have submitted robust and clear supporting information accompanying the claim in the first instance. But it isn't completely random and there are simple mistakes that can draw attention to a claim unnecessarily. So I'll elaborate on what those might be. Um, we've dealt with new clients which have cut and dry claims that have been investigated for simple admin or accounting errors. Most of those were self-assessing before they knocked on our door, uh, but worryingly some were using their accountants, and even more worryingly, some were using R&D tax specialists. On other occasions, it's because the share of total cost that qualifies is an outlier for the claimant's industry. And in that instance, provided the claim is valid, it should be straightforward to resolve. But claimants shouldn't be tempted to sail too close to the wind if they haven't got a watertight case. Lastly, it's ignorance of the rules and unclear or absent supporting information. Most of the time, when we are employed by a business with historic inquiries, it's because they or their previous advisor failed to understand how the rules apply in their industry. On other occasions, we find that historic claims were legitimate, but were badly presented either by an accountant with no knowledge of the subject matter, uh, and sometimes they just haven't prepared any supporting information at all. What are some of the common administrative or accounting errors? Well, admin errors typically occur when the additional information form is submitted. It seems straightforward, but there are a lot of fields to complete. And when you're only completing it once a year, it's easy to get something wrong, which is why we guide our clients through the process. In terms of accounting errors, the most common error we encounter is where a client or their previous advisor has included qualifying expenditure that's been capitalized. It's alarming how many advisors aren't checking this as it's a major red flag to HMRC. The other big one is miscalculation of eligible costs. This is normally a spreadsheet error, but often we see historic claims with ineligible categories of expenditure and accounting oversights that really ought to be picked up by the previous advisor. Sometimes costs are calculated correctly, but the way they've been presented is opaque. So we encourage claimants to show their workings that this is an alarm bell for case workers. If a claim is unusually high for their industry, what should a claimant do? Well, double check that all the expenditure is legitimate and get everything else right. Then make sure the narrative is robust enough to pass muster with a skeptic and have an arsenal of supporting evidence at your disposal should HMRC have any further questions. The system we use to thematically analyse material automatically generates an index repository of supporting evidence. If you don't have this luxury, we'd advise maintaining a bank of evidence manually. All our reports are written by a professional in the field of technology we're evaluating, and we seek a second opinion from another expert in the field. They are also triple checked by someone who isn't acquainted with the subject area. That process enables us to anticipate any questions a caseworker may have and address them before the claim is even submitted. If that expertise isn't available to you, we'd still advise claimants to follow that general principle and thoroughly check their work. What if the claim is lower than the industry average? Well, I wouldn't worry too much about that as far as triggering an inquiry is concerned. There's no point leaving money on the table. 
Claims that overlook expenditure typically happen where the claimant hasn't been forensic enough. They've been misinterpreting the rules or their advisors miscommunicated them. We use a system that can process all the contemporaneous material and businesses generated in the accounting period in question. If you don't have that at your disposal, the next best thing is to make sure suitably strict technical staff to ensure that you're extracting all the relevant information. It might be time consuming, but it's better than overlooking qualifying expenditure. What do we mean by being ignorant of the rules? Well, perhaps that's being uncharitable. Any advisor worth their salt will be across the detail of the tax code. The problem is how many are confused about the technical context of the claim and how the rules apply to the claimant's industry. When you stop to think about it, it's bizarre that the advisory industry that has emerged to support RD tax relief claims is staffed almost entirely by accountants. Sure, you need to be able to quantify and qualify the costs and understand how the claim relates to the business's wider financial circumstances. Ultimately, it's about explaining why technological challenges often in niche areas are made to novel breakthroughs eligible for the relief. An accountant simply isn't well placed to do that. What else should claimants do to avoid an inquiry? Well, first and foremost, I'd encourage them to retain the services of an advisor who knows their industry inside out and has robust systems in place. The advisor needs to know the tax code, but crucially, they also need to understand how innovation works in practice and have experience in your industry. All our consultants are charter professionals in the field of technology they're assigned to. An event, is an associate consultant of the British Standards Institute for its innovation management kite bar. So the business understands the mechanics of innovation and can impart best practice, but that isn't necessarily true of all firms. What should claimants do in the event they receive an inquiry? If they're one of our clients, I tell them to email the consultant right away and our team will deal with it. Thankfully the systems and technology we've invested in not only relieve the pressure on our clients while we produce the claim, they also come in handy in the event of an inquiry as we can mobilise quickly and use the index repository of information I mentioned earlier to address any questions. But if you are self-assessing your entitlement or using an advisor that doesn't have these systems in place, the first thing to remember is that the caseworker is not there to catch you out. If you submitted eligible expenditure and you answer the questions transparently and provide the evidence they request in a timely fashion, you should be able to reach a resolution fairly quickly. Not to sound like a broken record, but be prepared have the evidence and follow the rules.